Hello, hello, lovely people, and welcome to today's Tuesday Techniques with me, Jackie Blakemore of So Much More Fun. It's lovely to be here again with you on a Tuesday, and I'm just going to give people a chance to uh, log in uh, while I get all the uh, kind of housekeeping out of the way. So these sessions are designed to be uh, some tips and tricks on things that you can do to um, use sewing patterns. So I wanted to give you some ideas of how you can get familiar with sewing patterns and the ways that you can use them. And then the series is gonna stretch out into covering how you can make modifications to get a great fit. Because I think sewing patterns are a really brilliant way to start and they give you um, a lot of ideas and flexibility in terms of the uh, variety that there are out there of the types of garments that you can make. And so the aim of these sessions is to um, help you feel comfortable with uh, using new patterns and understanding how to get the most out of them. So these sessions are typically 30 to 45 minutes. Um, so a, a real kind of snapshot just to get you uh, some ideas. And if you're able to watch live, then you can uh, ask questions and post comments. Um, if you're not able to watch live, then these sessions are recorded and you'll find them in the Facebook group and you'll also find uh, on the Facebook page, sorry, and you'll also find them on the So Much More Fun website. So I'll just show you that um, in case you don't know what the, uh, addresses for that so that's um that's the website url um and um and we've got some past uh, sessions on there so if you've missed any of the sessions so far then please go back and have a look and we've covered some introduction to sewing patterns um and today's session we're going to be looking at the specifics around multi-size patterns so what they are, how you can get the most out of them, um, what some of the terminology means, and how you can adapt them to use them for your body shape and your size. So like I say, if you've got any comments or any questions, then post them live. If you're watching this on the replay, then post your questions or comments there too. I always keep an eye on that and I can reply to you uh, if anything comes up. Um, I'm always really interested to know what you get from these sessions as well. So uh, to help me tailor them and get and so that you get the most out of them, then be sure to let me know what were your biggest ahas or if you had any takeaways. And then I can also uh, fine tune those and give you more information that will help. Uh, so the programme for the next few weeks, so we have a programme um, that we, we are going to be using. So that's on the website. So if I just show you uh, that. OK, so this is the programme that we've got coming up in December. So today we're doing um, using multi-size patterns. And then on the 1st of December, we're going to be doing what is a twirl and why do I need one? And then during December, we're going to be looking at some common fitting adjustments for uh, different patterns, um, including kind of lengthening and shortening, some basic shoulder adjustments. Um, and then for those of you uh, that might need a, an adjustment in the bust area, then we're going to be looking at some kind of basic bust adjustments to get you a good fit. <clears throat> OK, so if you wanted to um, join in with today's session, um, then what we're going to be doing is looking at taking your own measurements and then using those measurements to pick a particular pattern size or sizes. So to do that, you'd want a tape measure, a pen and paper. Um, and I'm going to use an example pattern here. Uh, the pattern I'm using is the um, uh, the Colette Sorbetto pattern, which is free. Uh, and I can give you a, a link to that if you want that. Um, but it's a great starter pattern as a top and it covers quite a wide size range. So we're going to use that in today's examples. Um, OK, so let's start with what is a multi-size pattern. Um, now, quite a lot of the patterns that you get these days come in multiple sizes. So there are a few pattern companies. I think Stylark is one where they still have some patterns that are in individual sizes. So you order a size 10 or a size 12 and you just get that pattern size. But the majority of patterns these days tend to come in multiple sizes. And the ones that we've looked at, the kind of pattern envelopes that we've had a look at. So this is an example of one that we looked at last time, which was the Butterick um, 5898, which has some pattern, um, some different sizes on it. So in this envelope, if you remember, we looked at the fact that this one covers the sizes extra small, uh, small, medium and extra large. <clears throat> and on the back of the pattern, you can find more details about what each of those sizes corresponds to. We're going to look at this in a bit more detail for the Colette uh, Sorbetto. 
So when you open the pattern up, what you'll see is that on the pattern pieces, just to show you a quick example, that each of the pattern pieces has a number of different lines on it, sometimes with different line styles like we've got here, um, and they all cover different pattern sizes. And so they've usually got the markings on uh, on the pattern. And so within the same pattern, you've got all the different sizes, but you can also use that to understand how um, where the shaping is taking place and where the extra um, inches have been added for those different pattern sizes. So it's really helpful. Um, and we can use that further down the line if we want to, for example, if we find a pattern, so some of the Vogue patterns, for example, only come in small, um, like a small set of sizes, so maybe three sizes, some of the vintage patterns. And it might be that you're just outside that size range, but you still love that pattern. Um, and so what you can do is you can use the current kind of sizing structure that's shown on the pattern pieces and you can kind of extrapolate that and create your own size um, and differentiate it if you're a couple of sizes bigger or smaller than the pattern. So they can be really useful. Um, and so that's why we use them. And the benefit of them is that in this day and age, we are all different shapes and sizes. And we, um, unlike in the kind of 50s when we were all constrained by using um, corsets and quite structured undergarments, um, today our style and our lifestyle has changed and we have um, uh, kind of much more comfortable uh, requirements in terms of our uh, what we wear. And as a result of that, our body shapes and our body portions have changed. Um, and so it can be really useful to um, have a multi-size pattern because if you, if for example, you go into a shop and you're trying to buy a dress uh, and you might find that if you put the, uh, you know, a size 14 on, it's maybe fits on the top, but it's too tight on the hips. But if you buy the size 16, it fits on the hips, but it's too big on the top. Um, then that can be really frustrating. But when you're making your own clothes, you can tailor the pattern sizes using these multi-size patterns to say, well, actually, I'm going to make the size uh, 14 in the top part of the pattern, and then I'm going to um, blend that into another size, let's say the size 16 or 18 at the hip. And so you have more flexibility over um, the the pattern the pattern pieces that you can create specific for your body. Um, so. So what we're going to look at is um, how to take your measurements, first of all, to work out what pattern size you should be using, because quite a lot of people, when you start dressmaking, think that the pattern sizing corresponds to the size that you would buy in the shops. And even and you, you might have an experience where in different shops, you might be different sizes. And the same is true for different pattern brands. So each pattern brand starts with <clears throat> a sizing chart that they've put together from a set of average sizes for the um, for the the people that they are targeting with their garments. And so, for example, if you're targeting the younger age group, um, so like your top shops and um, the, the younger kind of style shops, um, they'll tend to have a pattern sizing range that reflects um, body shapes between sort of si ages 14 to maybe 25 or whatever. Um, if you are targeting um, the older generation, so for example, some of the kind of older brands, um, then, um, then you might have a different sizing chart that is adapted for the fact that as we get older, our body shapes change and our proportions change. And so what they call the size 12 um, in the older range um, may not correspond at all to what a size 12 is in a younger range. Um, and so for me, if I try and go into Topshop um, and uh, try anything on, then I'll be lucky if I could get into a 14 or a 16. Whereas if I go to Marks and Spencers or Next, uh, where the sizing is aimed at kind of more, I guess a more mature lady, um, then I might, I might be able to get into a 10 or, um, a, or, or sometimes even an eight. So the sizing that they use and the uh, charts that they create are meant to be kind of an average of the people that they are trying to serve with their clothes. Um, but the uh, one of the challenges of that is that they have to um, they have to base that on a, a kind of fixed set of proportions. And so the proportions that are generally used are that the bust size is 10 inches bigger than the waist size. And then that is 10 inches smaller, roughly, than the hip size. And so we would have this kind of hourglassy type shape. 
Um, but what we're finding now is that we, we don't exercise in the same way necessarily. And so our proportions aren't necessarily the same. And so I might be, um, for me, I'm uh, kind of a 36 at the bust, and then I'm a 30 at the waist, uh, and then I'm around a 40 at the hip. So, um, so what I find is that size, the pattern sizing works for me. One size might work for me in the kind of shoulders and the bust, and then I might need to go to a bigger size uh, for the waist and the hips. And so we're going to look at kind of how you can combine those sizes. Um, so uh, so what you can do is use the sizing charts that are provided on patterns. And rather than just pick a single size, so you might kind of think, oh, well, I'm a size 10 in Marks and Spencers, therefore I'll just make a 10. Um, to avoid disappointment, uh, just check against the, the measurements that are given on the pattern. So I'm going to show you a, uh, the, instruction, um, the instructions that come with the seam work, Colette, the, the Colette Sorbetto top. Uh, it's just to explain a bit more about what information you get and how to use it. Now, on patterns that you buy um, that are in an envelope, then you'll find this information on the back of the envelope, as we just saw. Um, but on PDF patterns, they tend to be include this information within the instructions. So let's just take a look at that. OK, so. So what we can see here is this is the um, the writing's a bit small and I will zoom in in a second. But this is the sizing chart for the Colette Sorbetto. And so there are three main measurements that we're going to take when we are um, using our information. And so when we take our measurements, we're going to be looking for the bust measurement, the waist measurement and the hip measurement. And really, these are just kind of measurements around your body. They don't tell us much about the height or length of the body, but they kind of give us a size in terms of um, which, which line to follow when we're going to cut the pattern out. And you'll see here, this pattern goes from what is called, what they call the size zero, um, up to what they call a size 26. And these, along here, these are just labels. They don't really mean anything. They're just a way that you can work out which pattern um, piece to cut out and which line to follow when you're cutting the pattern out. So don't get too hung up with um, you know what the number is. It's just a label. It could equally be called Bob, Harry, and Fred. It doesn't. It doesn't really make. It doesn't mean anything. Um, it's just a way of being able to denote which line to follow when you are uh, looking at the pattern. And so what you're looking for here is if you're going to take your own bust measurement. Um, and then you're going to try and find the corresponding number for that bust measurement. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so we can see an example. OK, so in my example, um, I'm my bust size is 36 and I'm measuring that kind of around the widest part of my bust. Um, and uh, if I just stop sharing this for a second. So when you're taking your measurements, one of the things that you want to do is firstly, you want to make sure you're wearing the kind of underwear that you're going to wear under your finished garment, because that is that's really what you're going to be dressing. And so if you wear a bra that's slightly padded, then make sure you're wearing that when you take your measurements. The second thing is you want to um, you want to take the measurements fairly close. So the patterns already include some allowance for uh, when you're wearing the garment. So you don't want to be leaving any extra, um, you know, any extra distance. So if I'm taking my tape measure, then I want to be wearing something quite close fitting. If you can do it in your underwear, then all the better. Obviously, I'm not going to do that live. Well, not this week anyway. Um, but you're going to take your measurements and you want it to be fairly snug. So you can just about move the tape measure, but you couldn't really get a lot of extra in there. You know, you couldn't get your sandwiches in or anything like that. So you want to be measuring um, fairly close to your body. The next thing you want to make sure of as well is that when you're taking your measurements, that this is that your tape measure, if I just stand up a little bit, that your tape measure is kind of horizontal with the uh, parallel with the floor because you don't want it to be sort of going up and down because that's going to add extra. So you want to make sure it's kind of level when you're taking your measurements. Um, and then the other tip that I would say that I've fallen foul of in the past is that, <laughs> thanks, Helen. Uh, the other tip that I would say um, I've struggled with in the past is that when I've taken the measurement for my waist, for example, I don't really like that number, I have to be honest. Um, I like that to be smaller. So I tend to squeeze my breath in. Um, and then take that number. 
And that's great if you want to make garments that you're going to permanently have to stand holding your breath in. So I have some of those dresses that I can only wear when I'm standing up or for going out, um, but not really sitting down in. And that's not really what you want to make. So make sure you're kind of standing fairly relaxed and take the measurement quite close to your body. But remember, you're going to have to wear this when you've made it. And unless you want to be standing kind of quite tall and proud holding your breath in, um, then you know you're going to struggle a little bit um, if you if you don't kind of allow for that. So, so once you've got your measurements, um, then what you're going to do is if we just go back to our little chart, um, you're going to pick you're going to pick the size that most closely corresponds to your measurements. Now, I would say that if you are between the sizes, so I said I measure in inches, um, so apologies if you're in metric, there is a metric chart in this pattern, um, but just for rounding the numbers, it's just, just a bit easier. So I'm a 36 inch, so I would be a size six here for the bust, um, at the bust point on the pattern. Um, I'm also a size 30 uh, waist, and so the closest size really is 30 and a half, which is a size 10. So I'd be making a note that I'm a size 10 at the waist and then I'm a 40 at the hip. So the closest measurement there is 40 and a half. And so, again, I'd be following the size 10 at the hip. And I'm going to show you in a second kind of where this shows up on the pattern and how you can blend between these sizes and use these different sizes. So um, if you're between sizes, then I would say start with the size that's the next one up, um, because if you go a bit too small, then it's it's harder to add on than it is to take away. So you can always take it in after you've made it, but it's quite hard um, if you make it too small to add to add fabric and to add inches in. Um, so you're going to pick the sizes that correspond to you. And it might be that you go up and down in sizes and it might be. So in this pattern, I'm a 6, 10, 10. Um, in another pattern, I might be a 12, 14, 14 or 12, 14, 16. So it's worth checking on each individual pattern before you cut it out uh, or trace it off which size you are. So just while we're in this view, though, the other piece of information that's in this table, if I scroll down, are the finished garment measurements. Now, there's three versions on this particular garment, um, three options in this pattern, uh, one with two without sleeves that are a bit, and one which is a bit longer, and then a shorter one which has got sleeves. Um, and so for the, same, um, for the same pattern piece, I might just have to zoom out a little bit. Um, so for the same size, uh, what you get here is that the size six is a for a 36 inch bust for the, the person's body measurement. But when you actually make the garment, it's going to make up and it's going to be um, just under 40 inches. So 39 and 7 eighths inches. So it's going to add in some room for you to move about. So it's not going to be skin tight um, and it's going to allow you to uh, to just kind of move your arms and, and move about. Um, but the, the key measurement on this particular pattern is it's quite loose at the waist. Um, and so on this pattern where the waist is, say, for the size six, the waist is 28 in, is for 28 inches. When you've made it, it actually makes up at over 40 inches. So that's going to add kind of 12 inches of extra fabric at the waist. And so what that tells me is it's going to be kind of quite straight up and down. There's not much fitting um, in this particular garment. When you look at the shape of the garment, um, you know, you, you can see that. So. So these both of these both of these measurements are important, but really the first ones, key, you know, the key ones to start with are find out your own measurement, take your body measurement um, and then find out what pattern size that corresponds to. And just make a note of that to start with. OK. Right. So. So once we've got our pattern measurement, um, then what we can do, what our pattern size is, sorry, what we can do then is have a look at our pattern pieces. Um, so I'm just going to show you that collect pattern. Now I've cut out like a mini version just so that I can show you that. Uh, so I'm just going to show you. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm just going to show you that. Bear with me one sec. OK, so here we've got our um, pattern piece. Um, and you can see that hopefully you can see that it's got all the little lines on it. And I've got two pieces here. So this is the front and the back. 
So the front has a dart in it to do some shaping around the bust. Um, and you can see all the little lines for the different sizes that we've got here. Um, and so what we can do is we can pick the lines that we want to use for our particular size. So I'm just going to mark with a circle where the size six is. Um, I don't know how well you can see that on this camera, but um, around the top. So for the every um, the sizing that we're going to use for everything above the bust or up to the bust is going to take us to this is kind of like this is roughly where our bust line is going to be. OK, and so everything above this line, we're going to use the size six um, part of the pattern piece. And so I'm just going to make some circles, not two, four, six, and I'm just going to mark where I'm going to be cutting out. And the line style on this changes, which is great. So you can kind of just follow the, the type of dashed line that it is. And I'm going to follow that up to sort of the underarm and about here. All right. And then the same is true on the uh, on the front piece. So again, I'm just going to mark where the six is to start me off um, on this pattern piece. And you can do the same um, on your pattern piece. And we're just going to go to roughly where the bust point is. So that's the line that we're going to follow um, if we're cutting out the size six. Now, the next line that we want to look at. So this is where this um, little arrow here is. This is roughly where the waist is. And on some patterns, it will say waist. It will kind of have a line and it will say where the waist point is. And so I know that by the time, ideally by the time I get to this point, I need to be around the size 10. So that's going to come out to here. So this is where the size 10 line is. And then I'm going to follow, I could follow that line down um, to the hip. OK, so I can follow that all the way down to finish off the size 10. And the same is going to be true on um, on the front piece. So again, here, I'm going to follow that line down there. OK, so you can see that we're going to use. So for the hip measurements, so the hip is going to be sort of around this sort of level here. Um, and, and if my hips were bigger, then by this point, I might be going out further and coming out to kind of the 16 or whatever the kind of next size is. Um, or I might be coming back in if I'm a bit narrower, then I might be thinking, oh, I'm back down to a size, you know, a size six. So you can just start by mapping out roughly the lines that you're thinking of following. So the next thing that we want to consider is the style of the garment. So this is meant to be fairly straight. OK, and so the side seams are going to be fairly straight. So if I was to if I just draw this line. If I was just to follow this and then go straight out here and then come down, I'm going to end up with some kind of weird um, like job per effect under my arm. And that's not really what that's not going to look great. I'm not sure many people could carry that off. And I certainly couldn't. So what I'm trying to get here is a nice smooth line so that I know it's going to fit me at the waist and then it's going to fit me kind of when I get down to the hip. And so sometimes what you might end up doing um, is following a line. So say, for example, I was only a size six at the hip, if I had quite small hips, what you're not going to want to do is come out and then come back in. Otherwise, it's going to look like some kind of Chinese lantern effect going on um, in the side seam. And that's not really going to work because the effect that you're going for is that it should be straight. So in some instances, you're going to be thinking, well, my minimum, you know, the minimum I need is a size six. But actually, to get the style of the garment to get that kind of straight up and down look, um, what I want to do is, is kind of blend between those lines in a straightish line. And so what I would do is probably take my ruler and look at. So I might add a little bit extra under the arm. Um, and we know that there's quite a bit extra added to the waist. So I might kind of just bring it to, you know, whatever that size is at the hip. And then I can do the same um, on the uh, on the front piece. So if I just show you that example, so I kind of just create a straight line between the two. And then I know that when I join these up, they're going to match. But also um, I'm going to get a nice kind of smooth transition. It's not going to be going in and out. And it might mean that if I've got small hips, it's going to be quite full at the hip. Um, and you can always take that in when you've tried it on, you know, kind of the first time you've tried the pattern. You can always then decide to modify it um, after, you know, after you've made it up. Um, but if you decide that you like that style and you've kind of got plenty of room, then again, you're going to get the nice shape of this pattern. So um, 
so yeah, so that's really what you're going for. So start with marking out roughly the lines that you think you're going to follow and the different places where you need to be at different sizes. And then try and accommodate that with the smoothest transition line between the pattern pieces. OK, so so that gives us that gives us our combination of sizes and then we can we can cut those out. Now, the other thing that we need to think about, let me just change this back. So the other thing that we need to think about is what other pattern pieces um, correspond to these different parts of the pattern. And so um, everything above the bust, you would want to make the same size, use the same pattern size as the bust size that you've chosen. So in my case, I've chosen a size six. Um, and the th kind of pattern pieces that join to here are things like sleeves or collars or facings that go around these pattern pieces. And so in my pattern here, where I've chosen the size six, this is the armhole, for example, there's no point in making a different size. Um, I want to choose the same, the matching size for the piece that's going to go in here. And that's the that's the size six. So when I go to make my sleeve. So this is my sleeve pattern. I just cut this whole thing out at a size six because this is going to fit into the armhole. Um, and then that's going to make sure it all works and corresponds with the sizing that I've chosen. So it's having a look at what other pattern pieces that you've got and deciding where do they join you kind of in the in the proportion of your body. So you might have patch pockets or inseam pockets or something like that and um, that go at the hip level, in which case you would choose the one that corresponds to the hip size you've chosen. You might have belts or waistbands. Um, and so you would choose the waistband size that you've chosen for your waist measurement. And if kind of like with ours, where um, if I take the front one, where it's transitioning between sizes. So if there was a waistband that joined in here somehow, then you can you can kind of trace this line because this is going between sizes. You can trace this similar line onto your waistband piece um, so that, you know, it's going to match up once you've once you've cut that out. Um, so yeah, so that's how to get the best out of uh, multi-size patterns. And they are hugely flexible. You know, I think um, they, they give us a huge amount of choice when we come to decide how we want the garment to fit us. And um, we can decide then that I want to be, you know, different sizes, top and bottom. Um, and I want to use different combinations. And so um, I, I, I can't recommend them enough. I mean, I always use them. I think they're great. And I try and avoid single size patterns because they don't really tell me a lot about how it's been sized and, and what's going on. Um, you'll notice as well on the multi size pattern that it's not that it's just kind of like just goes out bigger in all the places. So, for example, kind of round the armhole, um, it crosses over. So we've got a smaller amount of extra being added in the armhole than we have at the side seam. And that's because as we get as we get to bigger sizes, we don't necessarily get much broader in our chest in the same way that we might get broader around our waist and hips. And so how it's graded and how the size changes will vary in the different parts of the pattern. But if, for example, this pattern was um, I needed something that was slightly bigger, I was kind of between sizes, then I can see how they've changed the difference between the sizes. So say I wanted to add another size on, I could add some paper here and just draw my line, another whatever this is, quarter of an inch or whatever, um, out, and that will give me my next size up. And I can do the same in the armhole. I can measure the, the difference between these lines here and then just add another one on, and that will kind of give me an extra size. Now, it's not an exact science, and grading a pattern is, is, a, is very challenging, uh, which is why they quit come in specific size ranges, the rules don't always keep applying as you kind of get bigger and bigger. Um, but it does give you a starting point, particularly if you really like something and it's only available in a small size um, or too big a size from what you want, then it can give you some options to at least get a starting point. So just to recap then, so we've covered that you can use multi-size patterns to really fit your body and get your proportions, especially as our body shapes are changing. I think it's it's a great way to get the most out of it. We can find out our best sizes by taking our bust waist and hip measurements, and that will give us a great starting point, for, particularly for the kind of um, the fitting around the body. In terms of length, we're going to come on to lengthening and shortening in one of the later sessions. Um, and we can then kind of blend the lines and use the combination of the style of the garment and our own measurements to get a really great fit.
So that's everything that I was going to cover for today. Um, and hopefully you found this useful. I'll post the uh, replay into the Facebook um, page and the Facebook group and then also onto the website. Um, thanks for watching those of you that have been here live. Thanks, Helen, for your comment. She says I'm very funny. That's very true. I really am. Um, and next week we'll be here the same time. I'm going to be going through um what a toile is so how to make a mock-up of a garment and why they're so important this was quite a game changer for me um and i'm just using it to teach uh, my sister actually how to make something um and they're really helpful they're great ways of getting started without a lot of pressure um and so i recommend tuning in for that if you decide that you want to start making your own clothes if you're not doing it already or even if you are making your own clothes and getting a bit frustrated if you have kind of a fear of cutting out your fabric um twirls are excellent for that they're great for overcoming fear of cutting fabric um, and for getting started and to kind of help you get a really good fit okay so until next time thank you so much it's been great to see you and um have a great rest of the week <laughs>